Welcome to a new vlog. Today we're talking about LEDs, light emitting diodes and how we can connect them if we have multiple LEDs. This is one lesson I wish I knew from the start because back when I started tinkering with electronic circuits, I built a few projects with LEDs which let's say could have been made better if I knew the stuff I'm gonna present in this video. So let's start by giving you a short story about this project I built back in 2010. So that's 10 years ago uh, when I saw this project uh, made by or presented on uh, Lady Ada's website. And I believe back then Adafruit was uh, just starting. They were selling just a few kits. The project was called uh, TVB Gun and it was a small uh, Atmega microcontroller. Uh, with an IR emitting diode and it contained uh, the power of codes for most available TV remotes. The purpose was to point it at a TV and upon activation it will cycle uh, through all of the codes, eventually uh, the TV would turn off. Obviously a fun project that could potentially torment those around us and uh, still maybe a good idea for a project to hand to a kid these days. So I decided to use a bunch of uh, IR LEDs to uh, increase the uh, output power. And this is uh, where I made the uh, mistake of having all LEDs in parallel, each with its uh, own current limiting uh, resistor. This meant I had to drill and install and solder a bunch of these uh, different uh, LEDs and resistors. Uh, so it took a lot of time to build this PCB. And due to variations in the resistor value, the LEDs were running at slightly different currents, outputting slightly different power levels. If I were to redo this circuit today, I would probably connect these LEDs in series and uh, use a boost circuit to drive the series string with constant current. But still, this circuit is uh, not as bad as the next one I'm gonna show. Also from 2010, this is where I really wasn't thinking. This was supposed to be a panel of white LEDs to use when I go camping. So I could wire this up to a tall 12 volt battery and provide some light during evening hours. So this time I did use a DC to DC converter uh, connected in constant current mode, uh, but I made the mistake of connecting all LEDs in parallel and I had the constant current power supply set to something like uh, one amp which was the total current uh, I wanted to share for the LEDs. But if they're all connected in parallel and they have a variation of, let's say 5% on their forward voltage, which is not uncommon, each LED will uh, be drawing a different current. Some of them might be driven at higher than rated current, uh, this way shortening the lifespan of the LEDs. So fast forward to current time, let me give you some basic info on how to properly connect your LEDs. So let's uh, start by taking a look at this uh, LED symbol and uh, we're going to talk about uh, forward voltage and forward current. These are two basic parameters that you need to know for an LED. So an LED is a diode that emits light under certain conditions. It will have a forward voltage which is the uh, level at which the diode starts conducting and emitting light. So let's uh, take for example a typical uh, green LED. Uh, it will have a uh, forward voltage of about 1.9 volts. This figure can vary, you will find it in the datasheet of the LED. So this LED will start conducting when the voltage across its anode and cathode will exceed 1.9 volts. So if you connect a 1.5 volts uh, between the anode and the cathode of the LED, it will not conduct, it will not turn on. If you apply, for example, 3 volts, it will start conducting and the LED will turn on. Once it starts conducting, the LED will let the current pass through its internal junction. But if there is nothing to limit this current to the, uh, through the internal junction, uh, it will continue increasing above the rated forward current. The junction inside the LED will basically melt, damaging the LED. So that's why we have a uh, parameter called forward current. Uh, the manufacturer of the LED will characterize the part and they will mention this forward current at which it is safe to run the LED 
without destroying it. A typical value for lead forward current uh, might be 20 or 25 milliamps. Sometimes, if you want to be extra cautious, you can design the circuit with a safe margin. It's a good practice to leave a 25% margin on the current of LEDs. And if you go below the uh, full uh, rated current, it should increase the lifespan of the LED. And if you consider uh, you're using the LED just as a small indicator, um, most certainly you will not need to go full rated current. So in order to limit the current, we can insert a resistor in our circuit in series with the LED. Now to calculate the value of this resistor, we need to use the two parameters mentioned before, forward voltage and forward current, as well as the uh, supply voltage for our circuit. We know the LED has a forward voltage of 1.9 volts and a forward current of 20 milliamps. That means the same current will pass through our resistor, so IR is also equal to 20 milliamps. To calculate the voltage drop on our resistor, we need to subtract from the uh, supply voltage the forward voltage of the LED. So VR, in our case, will be equal to 1.1 volts. We can now calculate the value of the resistor using Ohm's law. R equals V over I. In our case, the voltage drop on our resistor is 1.1 volts divided by 20 milliamps will result in a 55 ohm resistor. So using a 55 ohm resistor in our circuit will limit the current to just 20 milliamps for our LED. It will light at its maximum brightness and it will not go over 20 milliamps because the current is limited by the resistor. As you can see, it's... Uh, Pretty simple to limit the current and drive a single LED, but what happens if we need more LEDs? We could connect them in parallel, like I'm drawing here in this example, and we can use the same resistor to limit the current, but we run into some problems. First, due to variations in the manufacturing process, each LED will have a slightly different forward voltage. This means it will draw a slightly different current which could result in uneven uh, illumination over the whole string of LEDs or even failure of one of the LEDs if it's driven over the specified current. In modern applications like for example display backlight, it is very important to have even illumination across LEDs and prevent any failure. Also, the resistor we are using to limit the current will now have to dissipate a higher power calculated by multiplying the resistor voltage drop by the current. In our case, if we have 5 LEDs each at 20 milliamps, the current has increased to 100 milliamps. The power dissipated by the resistor, if we have, for example, 1.1 volts uh, drop on the resistor multiplied by 100 milliamps is 110 milliwatts. And this figure can rapidly go up if we use a higher supply voltage, as is the case in practice. So we would need a pretty beefy resistor capable of safely dissipating that power without overheating if we start using multiple LEDs and we want to limit the current with the resistor. We could also connect them like this in parallel and use individual resistors to limit the current through each LED. This will bring the current through LEDs to almost the same value, but we would still have variations due to slightly different forward voltage between each individual LED. And also because of the tolerance of these resistors, they will not be exactly the same value. So we will still have some variations of current between each LED. This might result in uneven illumination, but if uh, one LED fails, the other ones will continue to function just fine because they get their current through each individual resistor. This might work fine for small circuits where you have let's say 5 LEDs, but it's not a good idea if you have hundreds or thousands of LEDs that need to have the same output level. So the best way to connect multiple LEDs to obtain the same current driving each LED would be in series, like I have drawn here. You connect the 5 LEDs that we had earlier in series and you drive them with a constant voltage source. 
same as before we're limiting the current with a resistor. Our drive voltage would have to be higher because we would have to accommodate for the entire string of LEDs. Our uh, DC source right here would, would have to be higher than VR plus VF1 plus VF2 plus VF3 plus VF4 plus VF5. So that's one drawback of this circuit. We need a higher drive voltage. But let's say we can easily increase that either by increasing the number of battery cells or by using a higher voltage source. And you would think now the problem is solved because we have this I current which is the same across all of our devices in this series string. But the problem is only partially solved because of another property of diodes that also applies to LEDs as well. And the property states that the forward voltage of an LED will decrease with an increase in temperature. And as you can see here on the left we have the forward voltage and we can see it decreases as you increase the temperature. If the forward voltage drops then the forward current will increase heating the LED even more and the cycle continues. And there is another property that we need to be aware of. The exponential relation between forward voltage and forward current. And this tells us that with just a small change in forward voltage, we get a big change in forward current. And this could potentially lead to LED failure due to thermal runaway. So the way we solve this problem is by using a constant current source. These days there are many integrated circuits specially designed for driving LEDs with constant current. They usually use an external current shunt resistor of low value to measure the current and with an internal regulation loop will keep the current constant. It's good to know that you can find these circuits as linear or switch mode and they can also step up or step down the input voltage to accommodate for the number of LEDs you have in your circuit. Here is one example of such a circuit, the MP24893, which is a switch mode step down constant current power supply circuit designed for driving LEDs in series. We can see it takes a rather high input voltage of up to 36 volts, so it can accommodate a large number of LEDs in series and then it can drive them up to 1 amps. So both problems are solved here. The LEDs are driven at a constant current and each LED will get the same current. You can also find this type of LED driver circuit in a step up configuration which will boost the voltage from a 5 volt rail for example. But this is the best method for driving LEDs if you care about running them at constant current and you should because the advantages are clear. One might argue that if you have LEDs in series and if one of them fails, the whole string will be inactive. And that is true from an electrical point, but in practice, LEDs have become so reliable that if you use the proper circuit to drive them, then there is very little chance of an LED failing over the quoted lifespan from the manufacturer. So, in the end of this uh, video, let's review the advantages and disadvantages of wiring LEDs in series versus parallel. In series, we have current matching, each LED will get the same current. We have brightness matching, as a result, we will get even brightness across the entire string. We have simpler wiring, it doesn't matter if you're wiring them directly or if you use a PCB, it will be simpler to connect them in series. As a disadvantage, we need a higher drive voltage and if one LED fails open, the whole string will be off. In parallel connection, we need a lower drive voltage and if one LED fails, the other still light up. But we get some disadvantages. We have unequal current, unequal brightness and the wiring is more complicated in a parallel configuration. I hope this video was useful and will help you decide how to wire your LEDs in future projects. In the description below the video you'll find links to some of the tools and parts I used in the lab and as usual I ask you to let me know what you think about the video in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.